Hello, everyone. This is Al Fadi, and I'd like to welcome you back to this uh, fabulous series that we've been going through related to the uh, scientific proofs, we're calling it, which is the uh, scientific miracles of the Quran. And uh, really, in reality, we're trying to prove that these proofs are no proofs at all. And what we're trying to do also is to help our Muslim friends to, uh, for the sake of Christ, to stop using these arguments that really are meaningless. In fact, we have been discovering even errors in them, and we've been revealing these errors, uh, errors as we've been tackling them one by one. The bottom line is this. We love you so much that we want you to, uh, please, uh, uh, you know, consider at least uh, looking at the Bible rather than to try to convert the Quran into a scientific book. Because when you do this, all you're doing is you are allowing everybody to poke holes in these arguments. And obviously, I've been doing this series with my dear brother, Jay Smith, who's with me here in studio. And now we're going to talk about another one of those uh, so-called scientific miracles of the Quran. Jay, welcome back, brother. Well, it's good to be here again. Uh, it's fascinating, uh, Al-Fadi. We, we've been going through and we've already done uh, a good seven of these supposed miracles. Have you noticed in every one of these supposed miracles, we found an error? Absolutely, and, and that's the thing. We weren't expecting to find proofs, but I certainly wasn't expecting to find errors as well. For instance, when we talk about the idea that honey is made in the belly of the bee, we discover three errors in there just by looking at it. Well, the first one we found, and that was the last one, we, we looked at the, the name itself where, where Nadir Ahmed says, see, this is a feminine form, and it turns out, no, it was a masculine exactly. form. We said, it says that, it, that the bees eat fruit. Uh, no, they don't. They eat nectar coming from a flower. That's and right. then it says that the honey is made in the abdomen. It does not not made in the abdomen at all. It doesn't even get into the abdomen. It stays in the mouth. But because Nadir found a reference to the abdomen, uh, honey abdomen, uh, the name that is given by some scholar, the problem is there is no honey. That scholar got it wrong. There is no honey made in any abdomen of any bee. It's made in the honey honeycomb itself. Uh, the nectar is taken to the honeycomb, and there the honey is made. Exactly. So that's three that we found in that. But we're going to be moving into a new one now. Uh, this is another one. This is number, I think, number eight. And this is the one that also came up in the debate that I had a number of weeks ago with Nadir Ahmed that he didn't want to answer. In fact, he ran away from this one. And the reason why is because Muslims go to, and they start with Surah 21, verse 33. They only end with Surah 21, verse 33. Uh, they don't go to Surah 36 or Surah 91. And that's where he got hung. So let's open it up and let's, let me see, reading from the Quran, this is what right. it says. Now, verse 33 of Surah 21, and he it is who has created the night and the day and the sun and the moon, each in an orbit floating. So he came back and says, aha, see, they're in a different orbit. Mm -hmm. How could Muhammad or anybody who wrote the Quran in the seventh century have known that the moon is in orbit around the earth but the sun is in an orbit around the, well, as he said, the Milky Way, the solar system. It's in an orbit around the Milky Way. And if you look now, we can see the galaxies and we can see what the Milky Way looks like. And if you look at it, it is orbiting. All these suns, all these stars are moving in a circular and, and, and moment. And that's true so far, you know, but that's not what the argument is. But how could is. they have said that? How could they have known that? How could Muhammad that's have right. known that's something right. that that's great? Right. And I kind of scratched my head and say, hold on a minute. Let's look at Surah 36. Exactly. Verse. Let's look at 36, verse 40. And I'm going to open it right here. I'm going to read it right from the translation. It is not for the sun to overtake the moon. Overtake? How can you overtake if you're in a totally different orbit? That's right. So the orbit that's referring to in chapter 21, verse 33. They're both in the same one. They're in the same orbit. They're racing. Let's go on. Nor does the sun outstrip the day. They all float each in an orbit. In an orbit, not in a separate orbit, each in an orbit, which suggests, therefore, whoever's writing Surah uh, 36, verse 40, is assuming that they're in the same orbit around the earth, both the sun and the moon. Let's go to chapter 91, verse 1 and 2. And there it says, verse 1, by the sun and its brightness, by the moon as it follows it. The moon follows the sun. 
That's right. So you can see here, if you put chapter 21, verse 33, if you com- continue with chapter 36, verse 40, and chapter 91, verse 1 and 2, are all talking about this orbit, but it's the same orbit. One follows the other. The sun goes first. The moon follows it. It goes around the earth. This is a anthropomorphic view of the universe, starting from man's position, which is exactly what most people thought in the seventh century. That right. was the going, the, the assumption is that these went around us. Why? It also fits into the whole thing with the murky water that we talked about earlier. That's right. And also, if it's setting in the murky water, then it's coming up. Remember, a dual cut line then runs to the east and he meets people who are close to the sun. How could they be closer to the sun than we are here? No one's any closer to the sun anywhere on earth. They're all this equal a distance, but he thinks that they must be closer because that's where the sun rises. That's, right. that's anthropomorphic. That's human reasoning. That's pre-scientific. This is a huge error. Exactly. And you know, it makes sense from a human standpoint, especially when you don't have access to what we have today, technology, satellite imaging, and everything else, you would see the sun coming up and going down, and then what happens? Immediately the moon comes up. So it makes sense. You're seeing one, it chasing the other. That's right. And that's, again, observation from a human standpoint wouldn't make that type of error. God would not make that type of error. Absolutely. Proving, I mean, again, this is as human-made as we want. We weren't asking it to if it's human-made, but this is what you would expect humans do. Now, we're going to uh, we're gonna be looking at um, other ones that we're going to get into, and I think it's great each time when we, uh, when we see these claims, and they are amazing claims, in isolation, they seem to, they could suggest, if you were just starting with chapter 21, verse 33, it could suggest that maybe there are two completely different orbits. What orbits? Try and see what else the Quran says. In chapter 36, chapter 91, it's really an orbit where one follows the other, one chasing the other. In fact, one, the sun, preceding the moon following. Fascinating to me because I, you've also been in the daylight and you've also looked up and you can see the moon in the daylight as well. That's true. So that doesn't, that would already eradicate that error from a human standpoint. Why didn't the Quran, the writers of the Quran notice that? Absolutely. I mean, it's sometimes uh, you look up and you will see the moon. I mean, so it looks like the sun is caught up to the moon, yeah. if you can see it in the daylight. <laughs> Completely contradicting on that level as well. Very good. So very you can good, see yeah. on so many levels, this is full of errors. Now, right. I, that's fascinating that the, Mus- that the Muslims are trying to find absolutely, they need to find some type of support because that's all they've got. Thank God we don't have this problem with Amen. the Bible. Amen. And that's that's pretty much really what I want my Muslim friends to hear. You know, I remember I told you at the beginning of the, uh, this episode is like if you start using your Quran as a scientific book, guess what? Science is prone to make errors. That's why you call it hypotheses sometimes. You start with the hypotheses, you do research, you hope that you're correct. But someone down the road going to come back and say, well, your hypothesis is wrong. We have another discovery now. That's science. I mean, God gave us that wisdom to be able to continue to be creative, to discover. But that doesn't mean he intended for us to use, for instance, the Bible as a scientific book. If the Bible is scientific book, I can tell you right now, anyone can poke holes in anything in there because the Bible speaks from a human perspective. The Bible says that, by the way, the sun rises and goes down. But never that the author of the Bible intended for this to be exactly... Okay, hold on a minute right there. Yeah. I'm going to dispute you with what you just said. You can dispute me. We're yeah. going to find out that the Bible is correct on this. Well, in the fact, Bible is corrupt in context that's if going you to come put other things In another as well. episode, we're going to show you how accurate the Bible is. But the thing about sunrise and sunset, isn't that what your newscaster says every day on TV? That is true. But what I'm saying is we do not use that argument. When, when we come across a passage that sun rises and go down, we don't say, see, you know, there is scientific evidence in so here. So why does a newscaster say sunrise and sunset? It's because that's an idiomatic expression we always exactly. use. Exactly. And the God it of the Bible speaks to us always been there in the English that language. Way. There you go. Yeah, and that's yeah. why we need to be yeah. careful because yeah. Muslims will come back and they'll say, ah, the Bible also talks about sunrise. But nobody suggests that a newscaster who's saying that on TV, and he'll do it tonight, he'll do it every night, the sunrise and the sun sets at this hour, the sun rises exactly. at this hour. Nobody su- su- suggests, therefore, that the sun's moving and we're not. And that's the beauty about our God. He speaks to us in a language that we would understand, but never that made claims like this. We have other evidence from from Job, from Isaiah, from other parts of the Bible that it shows things that how would Isaiah would have known this, for instance? How would Job known this? That's what we'll get to that. That's going to be fun when we get that out. Absolutely. (laughs) But, you know, I like the fact that you push back so I can push back too. Yeah. So now you see, that's the fun about what we do. You know, we're not here to uh, make scientific arguments. We're here to prove to you first, what you're saying is unfortunately is not scientifically possible, is wrong. Anyone can refute it. And at the same time, when it comes to our Bible, 
you know what? We're not concerned or afraid that anything you might point out in the Bible is, is uh, we're unable to defend. That's the beauty about our book. We can defend our book sometimes, even from our book alone. We don't even need to go to outside the Bible. So hopefully you find this episode to be helpful to you, just like the rest of those that we have done so far. Until we meet again, have a blessed day. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. Also, hit the bell so that you don't miss future videos. And please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash Sira International. And together, we can introduce Muslims to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you.